thing that's helpful to me when I'm listening to a patient is to conceptualize in my mind this picture and where those sounds are coming from in that respiratory tract. So as you listen to the breath sounds and as you listen to air coming in and out of your patient, thinking about where that air is when you hear the sound. If you hear the sound very early in the respiratory cycle, that means that the sound or the air is up here in the big airways that's creating that noise. If you hear it late in the respiratory cycle, that means it's further down into the terminal bronchi or the alveoli where you're hearing that noise. So think about that when you're listening to your patient's breath sounds as to where that noise or where that sound potentially is coming from. So, and then conceptualize it where it is on this respiratory tract. Another thing we should know about listening to breath sounds is that as you visualize this airway here, the further we get down the airway, the less movement there is of air. And air movement is what creates the sound. So if we're way out in here, where there isn't a whole lot of air movement, we're not gonna get very good sounds. In fact, the sounds may be very suppressed, diminished, etc., so that it's hard to hear. But the airways act like a megaphone. Okay, so you know, if you want to, you know, at a football game or something like that, the cheerleaders are using a megaphone because it's going to amplify the sound of their voice. The airways act like a megaphone. Look at how they start out small down here and work up and get bigger. So if we have a sound possibly this way out here, or you're listening to your patient and your patient's got diminished breath sounds and you can hardly hear anything, take your stethoscope and listen over the trachea. The trachea, well, the airways act like a megaphone, and you'll be able to hear that sound over the trachea that maybe you couldn't hear otherwise. Now, where is that sound in the patient's lung? Listen to where you hear the sound in the respiratory cycle. Early in the respiratory cycle will be up here. Later in the respiratory cycle, because the air is going to make its way all the way down here, is going to be down in here. So at least it gives you some feel for what kind of pathology is going on with your patient so that you can implement the appropriate intervention. So let's take a look at these breath sounds. The first of which is wheezing. Wheezing is caused by either having bronchial constriction or having secretions in the airways or a combination of both in some patients, like your patients with asthma and COPD. They'll have a combination of both things, both bronchoconstriction and secretions that will further narrow the airways. Now what we have is air whistling through those narrow airways, which creates the sound that we call wheezing. Again, asthma is a disease of the big airways, COPD is a disease of the small airways. So you could anticipate where you're gonna hear the sound based on that patient's underlying disease or underlying history. Typically, we're gonna hear that sound more predominantly on expiration because when the patient inhales, not only does the chest get bigger, but the chest expands the airway. The negative pressure, the suction that sucks air in is also sucking the airway open. When the patient exhales, we get elastic recoil, which allows the airways to elastic recoil as well, meaning that they get smaller. So we typically hear wheezing first on expiration and then later on inspiration. Okay, let's take a listen to what wheezing sounds like. that expiratory high-pitched musical sound. If we were to follow the air through the airways, it would be like this. Now you see how we can kind of follow it through the airways, follow it through the diagram and figure out where the problem is on your patient. So what we want to do in this patient is open the patient up, giving bronchodilators to open the patient up, Hopefully not only will it open the patient up, but it will also encourage the patient to move secretions. Because many of those disease processes like asthma and COPD also result in the patient developing a lot of secretions that need to be moved. The second type of problem that we hear, and oftentimes we get confused with the terminology here, is crackles 
Here, this one over by the x-ray department, right? Okay. Crackles is another term for rowels. Now, we are the only country or the only place in the world that calls these things crackles. The rest of the world calls them rowels. So that's why there's a lot of confusion with this. Because everyone is going to call them a different thing. And so you go into work, and I've even had somebody report off to me once who said, you know, night shift told me that the patient had rowels, but all I hear is crackles. It's the same thing. Okay, so be careful with the terminology here because we use this interchangeably. Now, people make it even more confusing by trying to subcategorize our rowels. And we talk about rowels as being fine or coarse or wet or dry and sign of trying to subcategorize them. Be careful with that because a lot of times, coarse wet rowels, or the things we describe as being coarse wet rowels, are really ronchi. So be careful when you're trying to subcategorize your rouse. Let's just figure out what are rouse first and what are ronchi and keep those separated rather than trying to be too specific about what the rouse specifically sound like. So anyway, rouse are caused by having secretions out there in the terminal bronchi or the alveoli. So it's caused by a problem out here. Terminal bronchi or the alveoli. So one thing we know about them is there's not much air movement out there, so it's going to be a soft sound. It's going to be hard to hear. Another thing we know about them is it's going to be at the end of inspiration because the air has to make it all the way down that airway before it gets there. So let's take a listen to some rounds. This patient has a very short inspiratory time. Okay, so we're hearing it very quickly. You hear that kind of bubbly sound at the end of inspiration? That's the rouse. So it's going to sound like a bubbly sound or a crackling sound. A lot of times we get that crackling sound that we call rouse, and that's because fluid is in the alveoli, and when air enters the alveoli, it pops the alveoli open, and that's what causes kind of a crackling sound rather than a bubbly sound. In this case here, we heard some that sounded very bubbly. Okay, so that would probably be secretions in the terminal bronchi. We're hearing that air bubble past that secretion. It's at the end of inspiration, bubbly, crackly kind of sound. It's going to be hard to hear because it's way out there and there's not much air movement. 